The Road to Mount Tom by Grace Hazard Conkling Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Road to Mount Tom The blue hills loom through morning mist. The wet road gleams like amethyst. What color is the road today? Thin amethyst with a silver soul. Or lavender in a veil of gray? Or crystal in a cloud's control? From goldenrod to meadow sweet takes the brief hill, running fleet between the morning glory vines and past the primrose hedge that shines with clusters pale of gilded dew. Where flowers of chicory bold and blue repeat the sky along the ground, and black eyed Susan's golden gown leans shrewdly for the gossip's view. It shrugs and nods with kindly smile, and with the morning on its face slips down another silvery mile through bramble blossoms and queen's lace. It leaps to follow the clear river and laughs to see the ripple shiver. But there is depth in its gray eyes within the shade where birches quiver. Now with wild roses in its hair it springs along the mountain stair and climbs in sensitive surprise closer and closer to the skies cool green tunnels of the wood the gray-beard rocks in solitude wonder to see the road go by like a swift spirit wild and shy for it has traveled fast and far with a steep azure for a goal and yonder where great spaces are even a road may claim a soul wherein remembered flowers gleam lest all its journey fade to dream and a poem this recording is in the public domain the road to hockenham ferry by grace hazard conkling read for LibriVox.org by nemo the road to hockenham ferry i found a river lane all lovely and forlorn that plunged and climbed again through softly clashing corn were curved and melting shapes of hills like purple grapes were veiled in pottery bloom and rich in showered gloom dark holyoke met the cloud that promised rain traveller like me the river trod serene aware of melody in neighbor meadows green and how that july day ripening harvest lay superb beneath the sun in velvet every one colored like shallows of a southern sea i had no time to rest the valley was so sweet the wind ran from the west on cool adventurous feet and put the storm to flight gold finches for delight quavered their tender words and golden as the birds a great cloud burned upon the sunset's crest and there i saw you stand i well remember how heart of the radiant land so dim and lonely now the fields in green and blue had known the way to you you were the river's word and wind and cloud and bird conspired to lay my hand within your hand End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Road to the Pool by Grace Hazard Conkling Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Road to the Pool I know a road that leads from town, a pale road and a Watteau gown of wild rose sprays that runs away all fragrant sandaled slim and gray it slips along the laurel grove and down the hill intent to rove and crooks an arm of shadow cool around a willow silvered pool i never travel very far beyond the pool where willows are there is a shy and native grace that hovers all about the place and resting there i hardly know just where it was i meant to go contented like the road that dozes and panniered gown of briar roses and a poem this recording is in the public domain the sawmill on the connecticut 
by Grace Hazard Conkling. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. The Sawmill on the Connecticut. Where clear the river ponders, the marshes slow maroon, there floats a leveled forest upon a broad lagoon. The bowl of spacious meadow is brimmed with trunks of trees, and there is a wilding fragrance embroidered on the breeze. Along the azure water most patiently they lie, and hear the shrieking sawmill, and memorize the sky. And see the impartial sunlight they knew so well of old, turn shavings into satin and sawdust into gold. All in the ripe September I tried to pass today, the smooth road beckoned follow, but the logs whispered, stay and lest alone the tree folk go sadly to their death i watched the pine surrender its rich and final breath and heard the oak's last murmur where poured its scented dust i do but travel onward as valiant fares must end a poem this recording is in the public domain Songs on the Mohawk Trail, Six Short Poems, by Grace Hazard Conkling, read for LibriVox.org, by Nemo. Songs on the Mohawk Trail, to a soldier in France. Oh, if today you dream of home, think of a road we know, untangling a blue skein of hills, and how the birches grow against the light, and of that day only a year ago for here along those hills again your little son and i are wishing the enchanted trail would lead us round the sky and drop us in a flanders field to see you marching by and now the child is eager for a wonder tale of greece i tell him how you sailed away like jason for the fleece to find a glory more than gold beside the winding lease but while his deep eyes glow and glow it seems another tells the tale and beauty to my heart no word of meaning spells and the river on the valley floor flows over flemish bells the little prince this pine cone is my offering and here are berries blue and if you'll take a birchen wand i'll make it fine for you with pan's pipes cut in satin bark and hermes winged shoe in Orpheus's lyre shaped like a heart, will such a scepter do? White Birches The clear wind swings a fairy flail, till all the tiptoe birches quail, the west is dreaming of the grail. God knows I have no heart to sing, I wish I had forgotten how, for what do poems matter now, music, or love, or anything? Yet I must shape my patient rhymes, for terror of a grievous place and blind my eyes with words sometimes for fear of hunger on his face or pain when i can give no aid or silence where i may not come as though a song could save me from the thought of all my world unmade the birches hold their laces frail against the sunlight up the trail and show me heaven through a veil the whole duty of berkshire brooks to build the trout a crystal stair to comb the hillside's thick green hair, to water jewel-weed and rushes, to teach first notes to baby thrushes, to flavor raspberry and apple, and make a whirling pool to dapple, with scattered gold of late October, to urge wise laughter on the sober, and lend a dream to those who laugh, to chant the beetle's epitaph, to mirror the blue dragonfly, frail airplane of a slender sky over the stones to lull and leap herding the bubbles like white sheep the claims of worry to deny and whisper sorrow into sleep after sunset i have an understanding with the hills at evening when the slanted radiance fills their hollows and the great winds let them be and they are quiet and look down at me oh then i see the patience in their eyes out of the centuries that made them wise they lend me hoarded memory, and I learn their thoughts of granite and their whims of fern. And why a dream of forest must endure, though every tree be slain 
and how the pure and visible beauty has a word so brief a flower can say it or a shaken leaf but few may ever snare it in a song though for the quest a life is not too long when the blue hills grow tender when they pull the twilight close with a gesture beautiful and shadows are their garments and the air deepens and the wild veery is at prayer their arms are strong around me and i know that somehow i shall follow when you go to the still land beyond the evening star where everlasting hills and valleys are and silence may not hurt us any more and terror shall be past in grief and war to a tired child this tall gray road that climbs the sky is neighbor to a star but if you watch the trees go by it will not seem so far and if you listen very still as though you were quite grown maybe the thrushes on the hill will think themselves alone and talk a bit in their own way or gossip with a star hush for a star is shy they say as any thrushes are and a poem this recording is in the public domain journey's end by grace hazard conkling read for LibriVox.org by nemo journey's end the long west like an evening sea held the blue day mysteriously and crest to crest the hilltops rolled like breakers on a coast of gold the bee sped home the west wind sprang along the valley floor and sang of fragrances he had to lend the apple trees at journey's end alone the silent house looked out to see the loveliness about a happy house aware of may and gray as apple leaves are gray it heard the veery's vesper hymn and watched the golden west go dim till even Greylock, far and proud had lost his plume of primrose cloud follow the road if you would see how dear a thing a house can be and find it dreaming faintly gray as budding apple leaves in may the ample hearth the quiet room the bough of coral apple bloom the singing bird the waiting friend are all for you at journey's end end a poem this recording is in the public domain war by grace hazard conkling read for LibriVox.org by nemo war moon moon what have you seen the other side of the sky a blasted land that once was green where fields and forests die naked hills and plains that shiver desperate with their mud a broken valley and a river running deep with blood moon moon what of the men where rivers thus run red i saw them fall and fall again i could not count the dead i saw their souls like host of stars climb the sky's dark blue hill oh all in vain the other wars since men are fighting still moon moon why is your look so pitiful and white it is because of one who took the lonely road tonight who fought like valor's favorite child who burned the foe like flame and went with death unreconciled crying his country's name and a poem this recording is in the public domain the return of jeanne d'arc by grace hazard conklin read for LibriVox.org by eva davis and nemo the return of jeanne d'arc jeanne d'arc why do the veils of paradise turn very france before my eyes with linked rivers chain on chain cool muse and amber sandaled n angelic was serenely fleet and wayward roan on winged feet there gleams the loire through lace of trees 
shod as of old with silences and there with paris at its breast the white sand lies along the west how wistful nay my serious sun will nothing make thee smile again has any gargoyle peering down from notre dame with hostile frown invaded thy still dreams at night dost thou lament the lost delight of years long gone i wonder why proud paris veils her from the sky in twilight vesture like a nun i wonder what has heaven done the lights are dead the land is gray like ghosts the pale roads drift away into the north oh i would see what years have wrought in dolremy and how great reams above the town lifts praying hands i must go down among my people i must know what makes my heart remember so and why the voices cry so near the human voices that i hear the men of france now mary lend thee out of heaven for dear defence of river seven and shattered gateways of the north angel of france o oh, lead us forth they are invaded they have need of my heart's faith yea i will lead but can they follow when i go unseen and vague as winds that blow yet shepherd winds control the day to make the poplars lean one way to ruffle rivers into gold herd home the clouds into far fold and tirelessly evoke the shy wild iris hidden in the sky can my winged spirit so persuade their hearts to follow unafraid now michael gird thee with his sword to thrust aside the alien horde to bend and break and hurl them forth come thou and lead us to the north soldiers my great gray horse long gone to graze the meadows of the dawn has thriven on clear asphodel till you shall learn he travels well and victory is still his stride you see me not but oh i ride for france and mark her starry goal the faith and freedom of the soul do you but follow and give ear to heavenly voices that i hear till past the black besieging din and whistling menace shrill and thin emerge some silvery interval of vanished bells that call and call forsaken save of sun and stars with portals blurred by battle scars with towers torn and windows gone tis mighty reams that cries you on though heaven and earth be withering her ruined bells shall sob and sing though earth and heaven be blank and bare you shall behold her standing there with wounded arms uplifted high for men of france who fight and die now heaven help thee understand the peril come upon our land now god forgive our little worth and grant the memory of earth i do remember everything i had forgotten how the king for all my pleading still delayed but god's own angels gave me aid there was a chinol nightingale that sang all night you will not fail and there were always saintly trees and dim old flowery villages and rain pricked pools like fretted shields and sunny hills and mellow fields oh there was france so now she lies appealing sweet before my eyes her wide flush rivers for delight her spires and poplars to invite the eyes and thoughts toward heaven men i fight beside you once again as those brief centuries ago each man of you a man i know in paradise i have not seen faces more steadfast and serene let them not tear the temple down that holds the soul of Rouen town, nor crush the lilies Amiens wears, nor those fair vines along the stairs of Chartres, where some hand unknown lured leaf and fruit from silver stone. The sunward hour of deepening dawn brings the glory of your comrades gone, and Rheims' lost bells are ringing. Hark! 
It is her voice. Jeanne d'Arc. Jeanne d'Arc. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Refugees by Grace Hazard Conklin. Read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis and Nemo. Refugees. Belgium, 1914. Mother, the poplars cross the moon. The road runs on so white and far. We shall not reach the city soon. Oh, tell me where we are. Have patience, patience, little son, and we shall find the way again. God, show me the untraveled one. God, give me rest from men. Mother, you did not tell me why. You hurried so to come away. I saw big soldiers riding by. I should have liked to stay. Hush, little man, and I will sing just like a soldier, if I can. They have a song for everything. Listen, my little man. This is the soldier's marching song. We'll play this is the village street. Yes, but this road is very long and stones have hurt my feet. No, little pilgrim, on with you, and yonder field shall be the town. I'll show you how the soldiers do who travel up and down. They march and sing and march again, not minding all the stones and dust. They go, God grant me rest from men, forward, because they must. Mother, I want to go to sleep. No, darling, here is bread to eat. Oh, God, if thou couldst let me weep, or heal my broken feet. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. At the Crossroads by Grace Hazard Conkling Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo at the crossroads he was a little belgian lad whom war had somehow failed to mar almost a baby face he had bewildered now and vaguely sad where are you going in the wind and rain and must you travel far he said i've started out to find the country where the mothers are and a poem this recording is in the public domain. Letter to an Aviator in France by Grace Hazard Conkling Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Letter to an Aviator in France Lake Champlain, June 1918 A slope of summer sprinkled over with sweet, tow-headed pygmy clover, melts suddenly to emerald air, between the moving leaves, for where the terrace plunges noiselessly, a woven wall of apple tree, bearing instead of apples now the red-winged blackbird on the bough, enchants the lawn of sun-stained green to seem as though it had not been. From where I sit, no roots are there, nor a gnarly trunk show anywhere, only the thick-leaved upper boughs, close clustered for the robin's house. And tall above them, up the sky, the clear lake quivers, like some high, wind-ruffled, huge crystalline tree, whose roots, like theirs, are hid from me. It must have light and air and room, with clouds for leaves and hills for bloom. Those pale blue hills that flower along, the living branches wild and strong. I hear you laugh and say, Why make a tree of crystal from the lake? Of course you may, if you prefer, Shape forest out of lake water, Great stems of sapphire shedding light. I understand you, it's all right. But since you are in fantastic mood, Build me a shelter in that wood, To keep June sounds and colors in, And shut out the infernal din of war my ears have heard and heard 
until no meaning lights the word. Well, when it's done and you come home, lift up the latch of gilded foam and enter the transparent door and cross the grooved and shining floor of a new house I'm building, sir, of foam and wind on lake water, with walls intangible about the inner rooms to keep war out. But this is nonsense. I have lost my whim. Your laugh recalled has cost so many Spanish castles, dear. And I confess there's no tree here, heaven tall, with hills upon its boughs, no sheltering sunlight raftered house, but only water wide and bare, and distant shore and empty air. And far away across the world, a proud enduring flag unfurled. Yet you and I could never live, but for the respite that dreams give. Your letters have their intervals, their hints of magic, a bird calls, or a strange cloud goes by. You hear music unknown to mortal ear. And as you said in other days, last night I dreamed, your message says. So in the end, I scorn your laughter, lord of my secret thoughts, and after, War will come peace, you'll not deny, and wider light for dreaming by. Now let's pretend as children do, it is my way of reaching you. Blue Vermont hills will say our fruit, which I may pluck when it shall suit my mood, and send like grapes to you, all honey rich and webbed with dew, packed in their cloudy leaves and cool, of color like a twilight pool. And if you've wandered past the sky on some new errand, comrade, I shall climb the tree the fruit grew on to see which road it is you've gone. How shall I plan to overtake those wings of yours, and I must make, in time to welcome you a proud white castle of some mountain cloud? But no more now. The old clock clangs somewhere within, a very hang small, golden wreaths along the alder, and Mother Robin's babies called her, just now from their leaf-hidden room, and sunset roses are in bloom. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Names by Grace Hazard Conkling Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. The Names Now he is dead who loved the traveling cloud and knew the white road to the harbor ships, and romance is gone by that called aloud his name and summoned laughter from his lips. I read the words, I know that this is true, but will you other women feel as I when the tall door of paradise swings to and glory has forsaken the wide sky? For though I read, my heart cannot believe. The wind cries no along the glittering track above the dusk and will not let me grieve. It was a wind that brought Odysseus back. And oh, the copse where the thrushes dwell, the foxglove forest with their outlaw bees, the moonrise like a distant softened bell, the hills that claimed him, I must think on these. And how I always knew that he had heard the music dripping from the rainbow's edge, and the brief meteor's infrequent word, and God's low footfall in the river's edge, till all wild earth lays passionate hands on him, the very islands will not let him go, nor the old mountains, nor the seas that rim, the unknown clinging lands. Thus do I know how strange the message that will come to you, all of you others who must read the names, and while your hearts deny that truth be true, the letters of one word like separate flames will light the face of a forgotten flower or broken water with a sunset stained, or a lost midnight and the secret hour of wonder when nor thought nor speech remained. And one of you will say, It was not vain. And one recall the valiant things he said. 
but all the time reiterate as rain some jest of his turns sharp now he is dead will leave your every feeling wholly numb forbidding tears the tears that may not come almost they come to me so long you will stare at the names incredulous and still end a poem this recording is in the public domain adventure by grace hazard conkling read for LibriVox.org by nemo adventure oh we shall travel yet you told me late or soon hearken and overhear syllables of the moon meant for the tides to fear borrow her silver threat make their wild hearts obey climb in our feathered shoon tall waves that dare not wet our feet with a curl of foam stroll through the coral home while ocean leans one way all this and more some day you said could i forget we talked like children then you asked what will you wear the other side of the sky a planet in your hair a gown of clear spun air colored like evening when the sunset has blown by garments of ether made with broideries of cloud would suit you but for me there will be ways maybe to dress more soberly a shadowed purple proud or grave enameled blue oh never be afraid i shall not look as well as you you cried and laughed aloud i knew that you would fly only not how soon your spirit craved adventure in the moon daybreak tempted you and i would hear you sigh baffled by morning's blue i have heard you say they seem not far away spaces i would know the infinite is not tall when longing is on me to climb the sky's sheer wall high enough to see unhindered i would go across the bridge of light into the silence white voices of past lives call along my blood and all my being must respond when winds rise up and fall down the clear deeps beyond i want to go with the wind the other side of the sky who knows what i might find and then you smiled and i heard in my heart goodbye now when the day is right and it is flying weather i think of the last talk we had together through a midsummer night well then you said since we must fight best choose the field of air plunge past the cloud pursue the foe down alleys blue round sunlight corners ride straight up the sapphire stair and let the wind decide the wind's a friend of mine and with a ship to steer that matters much if there is work to do don't trust them if you hear i mean if they should say i'm dead be sure i'm waiting finally you said small news could come to us i know they found you there in a torn flanders field under the crashing clouds and wrapped you in the flag strangest of all shrouds that turned your mud-stained cocky glorious there was a soldier's prayer and the guns called again called to living men and battle smoke concealed the morning's crystal crag towering aglow wherefrom you turned to go free for adventure unrevealed you longed to know nothing is tragic here unless the dreaming stops sometimes when twilight drops i am too lonely and your words go crying like lost birds and i unlearn my year but no mad wings so dear to you and broken speech of wild things each to each the veering duck that lie sidelong the wind and cry in passing the brief swan leaning on sails of snow these bring you very near with them you soar and go 
you drive the slant geese down across the dawn shouting you rush by along the sky and one day i shall follow south hear from your own mouth what highways you have gone what wonders you have seen when spring again is green and it is lilac time in all the lanes say to me i shall know what you said long ago let me not once forget call through the emerald netted rains say we shall travel yet past all imaginings there will be much to do among the stars with you when we have wings end of poem this recording is in the public domain six songs from over there six short poems by grace hazard conkling read for LibriVox.org by nemo six songs from over there the star dusk made a thrust at my heart with a star like a sword i had forgotten the war though the guns roared and shells droned on and on in a sullen chord it was not the noise and the reek but a star in the sky made the black trench reel again starlight and i saw beauty vanished away and love gone by muse the river marched an extra mile to loop the field and spare the grass and that was where wild tulips lived and where the blackbird liked to pass it seemed a sorry thing that we unmindful of the river's grace should plough the tulip fields with shells and leave a desert in its place his fallen comrade i wish that i could tell him spring drifts north along the valley track across new violets and how the myrtle warblers have come back that love his ragged cedar trees and how the pear invites the bees he said that news like this from home would call him back though he were dead nor any distant paradise could hold him that is what he said and now the letters here and he returns to read how stealthily irish as i was plodding through the mud through the mud and through somewhere i heard a fiddle cry a tune the way they do and it was sweet the way they have through my heart and through making a picture on the dark of you lull after the uproar such silence is strange not a nerve in my body but aches from the change wild thoughts go clanging loud as the guns i have forgotten the small quiet ones now by such darkness made free of dreams where looms my mountain where flow my streams where is the country of my delight i have forgotten dreaming tonight apology there is an air of bach that means a late new england spring to me soundless collision among clouds white apple honey for the bee the cricket limbering his trill the grass wherefrom he likes to sing the rainbow leaning to the lawn the spider's wheel the red starts wing here in a trench of flanders mud it is the only thing i know that means a catbird whistling down a lane i followed long ago again i find the open door beyond the twisted lilac tree and through that lattice german tune you look at me end a poem this recording is in the public domain the dream by grace hazard conkling read for LibriVox.org by nemo the dream a hillside acre or two astride a brook tipped toward blue valley fenced with apple trees a strip of flowery pasture whence the bees could gather flavors for your winter book red cedar for the hearth a lane to crook and elbow round the cottage silences to tempt the thrushes 
simple things like these were in our dream for these we used to look and now i have found a place of delicate heath and downward leaping stream and leaning hill above a valley blue as grapes are blue it must be fought for as you fight beneath the flag of stars our dream must wait until france has her cities back and i have you and a poem this recording is in the public domain The Ruined Cities by Grace Hazard Conkling Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Ruined Cities They are not gone, those fair French towns, They shall evade oblivion's spell, Put on their towers again like crowns, And stand triumphant where they fell. Though now no street, not one remain, Where once a hundred streets were wide, the feet of men will find again those ancient ways of love and pride the hands of men like a caress shall touch them stone on tragic stone remembering their ancientness eager to give them back their own they are not dead they only sleep exiled to dreams without a bell to call them home but men will keep their silvery shapes in mind to tell the builders how to fashion them in gray of dove and gray dove's wing and where they curve to their bright hem a field or river everything they were their slender uprightness their candid strength and pure design survives they shall not do of less than their full dower of lovely line naked the stone or wrought like lace and even now some artist knows by heart the lost cathedral's grace restores in thought its ruined rose and lifts his dream above the plain they shall come back forget their trance of death-like slumber live again cities of a victorious france end of poem this recording is in the public domain his letter by grace hazard conkling read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. His Letter Beyond the steel and the fire gleams the old desire. War has not taken wonder away. More poignant were its lightnings play. The appeal of beauty's lonely cry. I shall go dreaming till I die. I see wind burnish coin bright towns and roads that shine across the downs. A dusk of forest and a line of light that silvers the design. Always the shadowed and the bright, a halo for the blackest night. Islands where I've never been, the rainbow toppling down the green of tilted seas that rake a ship, the molten lava streams that slip from fiery crater rims and fill the dark with rose and daffodil, lakes mountain hidden spiritual the undiscovered waterfall like a white feather through the trees the undiscovered bird in these singing always alone alone the lovely voice of the unknown this is romance chameleon clad that called me when i was a lad that calls me now to follow well through blighted picardy to hell through hell to some elusive bliss of new adventure after this to follow without asking why so you will know if i must die upon this last and strangest quest it did not differ from the rest in simple wonder dark and bright a halo for the blackest night and freedom like the unknown bird was a wild voice i had not heard was a pure voice i fought to hear these words to you my very dear Beyond the steel and the fire gleams the old desire. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Nightingales of Flanders by Grace Hazard Conkling Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Nightingales of Flanders Le Rossignol n'est pas mobilisé. 
a French soldier. The nightingales of Flanders, they have not gone to war. A soldier heard them singing where they had sung before. The earth was torn and quaking, the sky about to fall. The nightingales of Flanders, they minded not at all. At intervals he heard them between the guns, he said, making a thrilling music above the listening dead. Of woodland and orchard and roadside tree bereft, the nightingales of Flanders were singing, France is left. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To Francis Ledwidge by Grace Hazard Conkling. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. To Francis Ledwidge. Killed in France, July 31, 1917. Shall I meet Keats in some wild isle of balm, dreaming beside a tarn? Francis Ledwidge. Lover of the lane rose, of rainy trees, and speech of corn, and wind upon the hill. Voice of the deep fields, high priest of the bees, when summer whispers all you say she will. Beside what crystal water, poised and still, have you bewitched his dreams with news of these, and of his nightingale, talking until the wild isle listens and the fairy sees? But if as far as this dark rumor flies, and he should ask of England and of France, craving the dear-bought wisdom of your eyes, oh, give him comfort, tell him they still advance, those grim and glorious men who mean to free your Flanders grave and his in Italy. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Reims Cathedral, 1918, by Grace Hazard Conkling. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Reims Cathedral, 1918. The cathedral's lyric stones spoke in faithful monotones. Through their dust I heard them say, Beauty has not gone away. Windows where the glass was gone put the sky's blue crystal on. And the barest to my sight was a rose of colored light. Where a saint had left his place, memory filled the wounded space. And the nave I knew so well trembled to a ghostly bell. Forth I went to see once more Joan of Arc before the door, still unhurt and poised to ride. Victory, I thought she cried. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Victory Bells by Grace Hazard Conkling Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Victory Bells I heard the bells across the trees. I heard them ride the plunging breeze above the roofs from tower and spire. And they were leaping like a fire, and they were shining like a stream with sun to make its music gleam. Deep tones as though the thunder told, cool voices thin as tinkling gold. They shook the spangled autumn down from out the treetops of the town. They left great furrows in the air and made a clangor everywhere, as of metallic wings. They flew aloft in spirals to the blue, tall tent of heaven and disappeared. And others, swift as though they feared the people might not heed their cry when shouting, Victory, up the sky. They did not say that war is done, only that glory has begun, like sunrise, and the coming day will burn the clouds of war away. There will be time for dreams again, and homecoming for weary men. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Honorably Discharged by Grace Hazard Conkling. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Honorably Discharged. 
will it be dusk when he comes home the thick and starry fringe of night that sweeps the garden shrubberies and turns the flowers white or will a morning bring him back a golden noon and afternoon if i could set the sun ahead and fool the plodding moon and a poem this recording is in the public domain Poppies by Grace Hazard Conkling Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Poppies When I grow old and dull and cold, I'll warm myself again, Where poppy petals drift and fall Like drops of scarlet rain, Thinking of gallant soldier men With poppies for a pall. When I forget their deeds, oh, then, come cold and dark and all. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Frost on a Window by Grace Hazard Conkling Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Frost on a Window this forest looks the way nightingales sound tall larches lilt and sway above the glittering ground the wild white cherry spray scatters radiance round the chuckle of the nightingale is like this elfin wood even as his gleaming trills assail the spirit's solitude these leaves of light these branches frail are music's very mood the song of these fantastic trees the plumes of frost they wear are for the poet's whim who sees through a deceptive air and has an ear for melodies when never a sound is there end a poem this recording is in the public domain hilda in the wood by grace hazard conkling read for LibriVox.org by nemo hilda in the wood your talk was soft in the wood you spoke small soft words like moss or green velvet mullen leaves you showed me mulleins holding the first snow you brought me wintergreen squawberry a snail's coiled shell it was you who saw the wind perched like puck on a hillside boulder it was you who told me of his peacock feather, made of air. I remember hilltop birch trees, balancing marble clouds on pale fingertips. I remember your fingertips stained with earth, with ground pine, roots of fern. Your hand was like a cold little stone and a glove of lichen. If there were to come a day without you, if ever I look for you and you are gone, what shall I do with this memory, soft-colored like your words? Your wild, small words of wind and mullen leaves, furred with snow. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. To the Schooner Casco by Grace Hazard Conkling Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo to the schooner casco dear to r l s remodeled for the fishing trade of the pacific coast has he forsaken heaven quite where is no sail nor any sea and for the sake of lost delight evaded immortality to feel the wind that sets you free and tempt you to a wide blue flight where any trailing dawn may be deep fringed with breakers bursting white then you will tread again the floor uncharted you are wont to roam and flee in ecstasy before the squalls that fail to drive you home will hear his laughter as of yore when the cloud breaks the green waves comb and make his spirit glad once more with flagons of enchanted foam but when the ocean's azure swoon glasses some isle of memories steal thither softly to maroon your wilful master if he please 
slip in by night behind the trees of its star-paven deep lagoon and drift across the pleiades to anchor in the floating moon end a poem this recording is in the public domain a letter to elsa by grace hazard conkling read for LibriVox.org by nemo a letter to elsa rose red russet brown were there elves in your town when you breathed little words would they flock in like birds did you eat magic fruit for your supper to suit the spiced garden the dew and the sweetness of you had the elf mother spread a low table with bread and milk white as the moon did you find very soon a bed white as the milk smooth and tender with silk where you laid your tired head russet brown rose red russet eyes rose mouth when the winds from the south when he rustles and stirs in the plumed junipers does he bring coaxing words from the sly mocking birds do they call you to come where the wind is at home when he rests from his trips elf locks scarlet lips i am wiser than they hearken now what i say i will build you a house velvet gray like a mouse snug and shy among trees there shall be if you please peacocks pacing the walks and a fountain that talks and a playmate for you and a green cockatoo bees shall dwell in the flocks and the gay hollyhocks and their honey will be in the sycamore tree every dusk i will spread a low table with bread and a brown honeycomb when the bees have gone home and heaped mulberry fruit while the thrush tries his flute and milk white as the moon then if bedtime comes soon you shall lay your dear head on a smooth silken bed to the thrush lullabies russet brown rose red rose mouth russet eyes and a poem this recording is in the public domain the caribbean from a northern garden by grace hazard conklin read for LibriVox.org by nemo the caribbean from a northern garden down a trail of blue larkspurs out of far memory flashed a day of strange islands on their broad wings of sea till the garden forgotten i was out and away in a boat swinging crescent on a wind for a bay and delight shook my spirit as the wind shakes a harp oh the rush of dark headlands to the sea gleaming sharp with a surf like a sword edge oh the jewel green hill with its white coral village like a cloud standing still though i tangle the sunset in the dim northern trees though i turn the pale foxglove into moon-colored keys where the larkspur blue water cast a net of wild foam in this winter doomed garden how should i be at home and a poem this recording is in the public domain i have cared for you moon by grace hazard conklin read for LibriVox.org by nemo i have cared for you moon i have cared for you moon cold as you are frozen on the sky with your dangling star it is not your shape nor your lure of light holding the sun on your breast all night it is not your voice i have never heard your glittering cry your wandering word yet you are romance and you are song i have cared for you moon long long since i first paid toll with a coin of dream on the road you silver you peer and gleam with a wistful look on your haunted face as though earth were a wonderful place and a poem 
This recording is in the public domain. Dilemma by Grace Hazard Conklin Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Dilemma Dolores, I want to make a poem About a river valley full of apple orchards in bloom Im wunderschönen mon ami they tell me i like to talk about pan but i was planning this valley for hermes out of heaven or up from the south maybe and slightly tanned i should need words both cloudy and iridescent for landscape gardening on a large scale i should need plenty of elms and willows and poplars and birds in the trees i think i should write figuratively of the birds a smoke of starlings a flame of scarlet tanagers though there are not so many tanagers after all. And I have a favorite phrase about the Viri's vesper bells, even if I did hear him yesterday at dawn, playing an Irish harp. So startling is the beauty of this valley with its river and the orchards hovering above it like wings. I should like to tell you about it in long lines like the curve of the river or the hills blue air cloud flecked as with the foam of may green hills superbly hollowed to the sweep of the broad river's teeming deep delight that feels slow summer coming up this way gulls lately from the sea in swaying flight and flickers shrilling from the orchard's steep the moveless plumes of elms in feathered sleep and pear trees from the vale crest rushing white transparent poplars peering pale and bright at new leaf secrets willows cannot keep and so on and so on but my river is mere words and as for the valley somehow i fail to make my orchard stand on edge above blue water under the sunlight i miss the sheer pale suddenness of the apparition for me they will not leap along the hillsides white and curved and smooth as the feathers on a seagull's neck and somebody else has said slow summer or was it spring dolores how can i measure this wonder why must i hang bells of rhyme upon the skirts of beauty or put my imagination through a sieve that imagination that at one moment lets me look at the hudson in its valley as though it were peacocks pacing slowly toward the sea between hills of mother of pearl and at another lets me tie the river into a bowl knot to lay against the orchards like a jewel and a poem this recording is in the public domain songs of places old mexico thirteen short poems by grace hazard conklin read for librivox dot org by Nemo. Songs of Places, Old Mexico. Gulf of Mexico. Now the steady ship runs south over submerged stars, plows along the Milky Way, swings across deep Mars, tossing foam of worlds aside, treading glory down. I have seen half heaven tonight dip and dive and drown. Guadalupe. No matter how you love me, you cannot keep me home along the airy lane of bells beyond the peacock dome. I know the way to travel, and I shall go at will, where the stone sails await the wind upon the holy hill. The mariners who made them, they have been long away, but when a wind from heaven blows, they will come back some day, and I shall hear them singing and watch the stone sails fill till the white city like a ship moves out across the hill the border gardens the swans were like a flowing song with crystal and the rhyme they sailed from line to limpid line and beauty marked the time there was a rhythm in that song an accent no one knows and it has gone away again where all the music goes 
Orizaba. Is it long to Orizaba? Have I far to go? When I ask the carrier pigeons, they don't know. There's a mountain I am seeking, feathered all with snow. When I ask the valley orchids, they don't know. Like an orchid pale and folded, like a snowy bird. That's the mountain I am seeking, have you heard? You can see it on the sunrise when the clear winds blow. Is it far to Orizaba? Do you know? Tampico Oh, cut me reeds to blow upon, or gather me a star. But leave the sultry passion flowers growing where they are. I fear their sombre yellow deeps, their whirling fringe of black, and he who gives a passion flower always asks it back. Santa Teresa A fern-shaped valley green, pale trees that drift their leaves, the dew that drips unseen from a rose's eaves. So still the place, I know, the snail looks from his door, I shall not see it so any more. Popocatapetl. Dusk, and the far volcano wears a film of sunset sky. The valley glimmers like the sea, and little winds go by. The jasmine flower upon my breast is an insistent word, but patiently my stubborn heart pretends it has not heard. Guanavaca. You would not keep me near you, you could not hold me far. And now it does not matter where you are. My heart has long forgotten the ardent words you said, but not the great stars blazing overhead. Huesteca Orchid, elfin orchid, made of purple air, yours is wistful silence, hard to bear. Were he here, my lover, wiser far than I, we should hear your beauty sing and sigh. Veracruz. I see them in the storm-washed light, like ebony against the sand, the wrecks of ships lost long ago, from many a mellow land. Oh, may the sand soon cover them, and all their sorrow be unlearned. They are too like those dreams of mine, that never more returned. Durango. The cactus candelabra are lit with yellow flowers. Come take my jocund mornings, my glancing April hours. Do you not know the desert is slow to bloom again? The trail is long to April, across an arid plain. And it is but a moment, the time of cactus flowers, before the dusty journey, oh, share my April hours. Amicamica I climb the sacred hillside, up through the evening blue. The ancient steps are silvered by starlight and the dew. And if the great church vanish, my soul may worship still, for God has hung the southern cross above the kneeling hill. San Luis Potosi Oh, for the comet's trail across the purple sky, so far we could not hear the glory rushing by. It will not come again for more than ninety years, when I shall have forgotten all my tears. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Door Harp by Grace Hazard Conklin Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Door Harp you went, there drifted back to me the last breath of a melody, diffused aeolian loveliness, too fugitive to calm or bless. I wonder human ear could know a wraith of music fading so. It left no footprints on the wind, nor even memory behind. Was it some solacing sweet air, or cadence of a soul's despair? The small harp quivers on the door that you have closed forevermore, but will not breathe the lyric cry I have forgotten, and its sigh, when others go, is only pain, because 
you do not come again. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Bells at Evening by Grace Hazard Conklin. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Bells at Evening. I heard the bells turn over, over and over until they had poured their music, none was left to spill. It was fresh and dusky when the big bells rang, and I stopped to listen, wondering why they sang. Wondering and not caring, while the darkness fell, and the west wind trembled, tossed from bell to bell. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Night Song by Grace Hazard Conklin. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Night Song the road runs up against the stars, cool stars low swinging in the night. The valley guarded river gleams, the pear trees glimmer white. A little wind walks in content along the quiet star filled wood. This is the very road we went, and here is where we stood. What unseen whispers are these, whose voices I've always known? Only the happy heaven heard trees, for I am here alone. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Child Song Overheard by Grace Hazard Conklin. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. A Child Song Overheard. I heard you singing, singing alone, of river sand and glittering stone, of a curved valley like a blade, and one who dwelt there unafraid. Where was the river? Who the king, whose deeds you were remembering? Why did you make his glory high, and spangled like a stretch of sky? Oh, this must be a land you knew in dreams all lovely and untrue. And of the king I heard you say he lives a million years away. And holds the river in his hand between its ribbons of bright sand, till suddenly he lets it fall, down, like a laughter musical. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Parting by Grace Hazard Conklin. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Parting. The round of a hill, the glass of a pool, trees folded still, trees dreamy, cool. Trees with green wings, the road going past, a house that clings, where the moon rose last. Where the moon rose late, the night you were gone, and you would not wait for her mellow dawn. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. White Foxglove by Grace Hazard Conklin. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. White Foxglove. Here in a leaning tower, Brown bees are at home. This is the moon loved flower. Like cells of honeycomb, these taper and are brimmed with savors of wild dew. O oh, bees gold lace and limbed, I envy you. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Rainy Moon by Grace Hazard Conklin. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. The Rainy Moon. Did you see the rainy moon up above the roofs last night? It was like a primrose flower when the mist is blowing white. When a film of gossamer flutters from the evening tree 
and the primroses are pale and the dusk is come to be i should like to go with you past the primrose haunted mist to that hill among the clouds where we trembled where we kissed end a poem this recording is in the public domain garden dusk by grace hazard conklin read for LibriVox.org, by Nemo. Garden Dusk The stillness made of azure, and veiled with lavender, must be my daylight garden, where all the pigeons were. Blue dusk upon my eyelids, your drifting moods disclose, the moth that is a flower, the wings that are a rose. Make haste, exhale your sweetness, for you must vanish soon. The garden will forget you at rising of the moon. A glory dawns predestined of old to banish you and bind you fast with rainbows in dungeons of the dew. And who will then remember your cool and gossamer art? Ah, never moon may exile your beauty from my heart. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Rose by Grace Hazard Conklin Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Rose The little rose is dust, my dear, The elfin wind is gone, That sang a song of silver words And cooled our hearts with dawn. And what is left to hope, my dear, Or what is left to say? The rose, the little wind in you, have gone so far away. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Cedars by Grace Hazard Conklin. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Cedars. They are so dark, the cedars. They keep so still a house. Muffled in purple silence, they fold their brooding boughs. Yet they are shaped like music when the heart listens most. They are the wind's grave gesture, the singing river's ghost. And twilight in their branches is murmurous and cool, like strings of water falling into a waiting pool. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Moonrise by Grace Hazard Conklin Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Moonrise Along the dunes the wind leans low Where amethystine shadows flow Softly among gigantic trees Like tides of sleep about their knees Intense and strange the moon sweeps by Alone across the hollow sky No cloud, no star no gray-winged bird, only her breathing sail unheard. Cleanly her white bow cuts the dark, she cleaves the night with never a spark, a fiery spray from sun or star. I wonder who the sailors are. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Solitude by Grace Hazard Conklin Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Solitude Color The wing of a cloud Stillness The wind at rest that cried all day aloud The wood unmoving stands against the topaz west O oh, straining wind-torn trees Are you at last quite still? with the dusk in your hands? What is it you descry by August lantern light of planets where the sky touches the hill? Souls, souls that go by, tireless, going home. Gray wind glimmering things through the moon-empty night. 
gleaming wings foam of spirits white white past the folded fire of the sunset flying always a mist that blows a silvery shape that goes a vanishing a crying and a poem this recording is in the public domain Nuit de Toile by Grace Hazard Conklin Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Nuit de Toile, Claude de Busset, Sung to an accompaniment of harps To E.D. Oh, she was in a golden gown With harps about her like tall wings They must have fluttered from that town Made all of gold and precious things and golden too above the strings her gleaming voice bewitched the ear like the night wandering bird that sings an air wild eden used to hear and a poem this recording is in the public domain reflet dans l'eau by grace hazard conklin read for librivox dot org by nemo Reflet dans l'eau, Claude de Busset, Harp Ensemble, to K.F. That remote music, that delight of breathing harps from far away, awoke my thought as spirits might, if I could hear the things they say. I think they made the cobweb cord, de Busset hangs with trembling dew, and play on that octave like a sword, that cuts the gossamer strands in two they lean above his pool of pearl its loosened shade its shimmerings of light like little waves that curl and break across the startled strings till the reflecting water shows not sky alone in willow's grace but color of an unborn rose and wonder on an unseen face and a poem this recording is in the public domain Elegy for the Irish Poet, Francis Ledwidge, by Grace Hazard Conklin, read for LibriVox.org, by Nemo. Elegy for the Irish Poet, Francis Ledwidge, Killed in Action, July 31, 1917. Never more singing will you go now, wearing wild moonlight on your brow. The moon's white mood in your silver mind is all forgotten. Words of wind from off the hedgerow, after rain, you do not hear them, they are vain. There is a linnet craves a song, and you returning before long. Now who will tell her? Who can say on what great errand you are away? You whose kindred were hills of meath, who sang the lane rose from her sheath what voice will cry them the grief at dawn or say to the blackbird you are gone end a poem this recording is in the public domain the wilderness by grace hazard conklin read for librivox dot org by nemo the wilderness i found myself alone and then no man differed from other men and they were like a mood gone by the planets quivered on the sky and poured themselves in silver streams the wilderness was blurred with dreams and starlight and the ghost of blue trees with their great wings lifted through the mist or stirring where it thinned the young moon floated up the wind and from the warm and hidden ground i heard the multitudinous sound of life i felt and used to know a thousand thousand years ago and mean to know again some day a thousand thousand years away and a poem this recording is in the public domain
End of Wilderness Songs by Grace Hazard Conklin.